we were super nervous about it, but we ended up just taking the plunge and we actually ended up getting an eight plex. It was insane. We are so blessed to be a part of this group because um, it has really given us access to so many different people of different walks of life who can support us and we can support them back. Our one unit completely um, short-term rental out and it was rented out for an entire year. And that pretty much that unit cash flowed the entire building. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to the Investment Mount Dave Real Deal Show. My guests today are Susan and Daniel, and they bought a Netflix using other people's money. They found quite the amazing deal. One of their units pays for all their expenses, and it's a Netflix. They're going to be sharing with you today how they found this property and how they convinced the private lenders to lend them money. And if you don't know who we are yet, Dave and I have purchased over 240 units in five countries. Canada, US, Costa Rica, Mexico, and Dominican Republic. These are all solely owned, so we always buy properties using none of our own money and no joint venture partners. And if you're brand new to my channel, thank you so much for being here. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified every time we release a new video. Now let's get started. Susan and Daniel, thank you so much for being on our Real Deal show today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm super excited. I know we talked a little bit beforehand. You're like, Mel, I'm a little nervous. And I want to start off by saying, congratulations. Way to get outside of your comfort level, doing th those kind of things. I remember my first podcast, I was very, very nervous as well. So I completely understand uh, how that feels. But um, I know that you've been uh, taking, your part of our Action Family community, um, but you've been doing some great things as well. So please uh, go ahead and, and introduce yourself to, to our community. So I'm Susan. <laughs> I'm Daniel. Um, we have joined the Action Family, I believe it was September of 2022, just after we had our first baby <laughs> as well. So that was a big milestone. And since then, we've been taking, I guess we want to say is action. We've been taking action. <laughs> okay, so what's been happening? I had a baby. Uh, what's been happening since? Um, so we actually, we decided to test out the Action Family theories and the program. And Dan and me had been... We were super nervous about it, but we ended up just taking the plunge and we actually ended up getting an eight plex. It was insane. Like wow. we were shocked that we used the program and like we're smiling right now because we're just like ecstatic. Like it's just insane. Like we didn't know that it would, you know, work because <laughs> we were like doubting <laughs> ourselves. We're like, okay, like, can we actually do this? And then we just kind of did it. And then now we have eight, an eight plex and it's just crazy. And we have more units before that but it was like we just kept like the, we just the program helps us find oh, different ways of financing deals way better, like that way better yeah. <laughs> okay so was finance okay so what did you have before let's kind of start off from the beginning so you had some properties before and then but you were, were was it the like the down payment that you're having a hard time with yeah, yeah we had to kind of get it ourselves and it was a little bit more um like our cash flow, we could see our cash flow going down quite a bit. Like we constantly okay. had to, it just felt like every time that we would get ahead with one property and we wanted to buy another one, it's just like, how do we do that? Okay, now we've got to drain everything again. And then we didn't have anything for emergencies. And it just was kind of like, there's got to be a better way. And then I really Facebook, Instagram stalked your program. <laughs> and, then I, and I was telling Dan, I was like, look at this, look at what they're doing. We have to find a way to do this. And then finally, Dan got on board. I convinced him. Um, I forced him into a call with Dave. And, I, <laughs> and Dave did all the convincing. And, um, and then we got, we signed up. And then literally not even that long after we bought an, another, we bought an Aplex. It was just inc incredible. Like, and now we're looking at more deals, obviously, but um, we're just trying to like, um, look at all the deals differently now, which is not something we've ever done before. We were looking at it like, okay, we need this much down and this, and now it's like, okay, so how can we be more creative with this? Where can we, it's just so different. Well, I think what you're probably seeing is that now that you see that it works, that yeah, your whole vision can change now because you're able to buy a lot more properties at a way faster pace, uh, because you're not having to work your nine to five to come up with those, that 20 or 25% down payment. Um, so whereabouts are you located? We're located in Camrose, Alberta. In Alberta, okay. And is that where you're currently investing as well? Yeah, at the minute, like we are looking at branching out into different areas, but that's a further down the road project. That's fantastic. Okay, so let's talk about um, that deal a little bit. So, okay, so you 
you got into the program, you learned about creative financing, raising capital, none of your own money. Um, I'd love to hear about this, this eight plex that, that you purchased. How were you able to, to find it? Were you working with investor focused agent? Um, and how were you able to pretty quickly um, fund this deal? So we are really, really super lucky that we have so many people in our lives that really believe in us and um, they just want to give us their money, too, <laughs> which is great because our family is really, really supportive. And so that's where our first one came from. But since then, we've been getting more people coming to us being like, how can we support you and do it's just been it's just been insane. We actually found the eight flex by just driving around town more than anything. We were looking for another property, then we took a drive around just to see why the for sale sign outside of it. And that's how we ended up finding the place. I forgot we did that. I think oh. it was Dave actually mentioned it on the program to actually just take a drive around town. So we did that and that's how we found the place. That's right. You did say that. We did we did watch that episode and we're like, let's just take a drive around town. And then we did. That's how we found it. You know what? <laughs> if anything else, it just gets you like I love driving around and even uh, right now we're we're investing in different areas. Um, but I'll, I'll still do that in, in my city or whenever I'm traveling. And I'll, I'll just purposely be looking at buildings and and attracting those buildings my way and thinking about okay that person might be willing to hold financing for me and that person might be willing whether or not they will that's a different issue you know different question but the reality is out of if i do that a hundred times chances are yeah probably one of them will be wanting to, to hold financing for me so just yeah looking at different buildings putting it out there um i love that's how uh, that, that's how we found that one so before we talk about this specific um property um i do want to talk about you said okay so that first and, and that's awesome yeah you can definitely reach out to to friends family i always encourage that many people of course they go well i don't have any friends or family with with um you know with a lot of money or who are wanting to invest and there's definitely ways outside of that but i like that you started off that way hey why not ask um, of course, but now that you're saying, okay, but now all of a sudden we're getting other people. So is it the domino effect? Is it people like how, who are those people and how are they hearing about what you're doing? You're going to laugh. It's actually people in the action family. So, okay. um, so we've made some really great connections within the action family. We've met some really amazing people. Um, we are so blessed to be a part of this group because um, it has really given us um access to so many different people of, of different walks of life who can um, support us and we can support them back. So it's like, it's not just like we're taking, it's we can give and take as well, which is, it's just so great. It's like teamwork. It, yeah. it's so we it's so weird. I never thought about this sort of okay. thing. Like never so, thought about getting into a program. It's crazy. Right. <laughs> well, we do have a very large community. Um, it's very, very active. As you know, there's posts, there's interactions, there's always something going on within the community. So it was just, just being active within the community. You made some new relationship, new friends. Um, and now they're like, Hey, wait a second. I, I, I see what you're doing and I want, I have money and I want to, you know, potentially invest it with you type of thing. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, so was that easier or harder than you thought? Um, it was easier than we thought, actually. Like yeah. We thought it would take a lot more convincing to get people on yeah. board with you. And once they start seeing your actual success and that you are doing it the right way, like people are more willing to come forward and say, hey, I'll invest with you. Okay, so how do you nice. demonstrate? So if somebody is new to real estate, like, okay, this sounds great. You're, you're attracting additional funds now. How, like, what do those conversations, what are you saying? Are, are you are you showing them a deal? Are you talking about your past deal? Like, how are you able, and even for your family as well, because I mean, sometimes, you know, I know some people might think, oh, well, you're lucky you had family, but I mean, typically family and friends, often they might be the hardest people to, that may want to convince. So I'm sure there's some convincing or some proof or some strategies that you had to utilize to, to raise those funds, whether they're your, your personal inner circle or, you know, inside the action family community or, or when it comes to other investors as well. So what do those conversations look like? Oh my gosh. It was so much, so much pitching, um, just have, being prepared, like knowing your numbers and having, having correct numbers, like really knowing your market, really understanding the property that you're getting into and what you're going to do with it. Because if you don't have that, that like exit, you just, nobody wants to invest with somebody who He's doesn't have a plan and yeah who's unprepared right you have to have like a pitch <laughs> okay and okay showing them i think showing them the actual numbers was the biggest 
help for us because then they understood where we stood and where they stood because that was the biggest hurdle that we had, especially with our family, because they really grilled us quite a bit. <laughs> I didn't find that a lot of other people grilled us, but our family really, really grilled us the most. Um, right. Because it's close to home, right? So they want to be... It's understandable. You are, you're playing with other people's <laughs> money. People are going to want to know exactly what you're going to do with it and what the returns are kind of going to look like and everything sure. else, so... Sure. Okay, so it was good experience going through all those kind of because yeah, you're bang on. Just, I have some lenders that you know they'll drill. They want to know everything, and I need to be on top of my game. I need to know what I'm talking about. I need to know my numbers. I need, of course, to have my clear exit strategy on how I'm going to pay them back. All those things, and then some people are just you know they're they're a bit more passive, um, and and they're just like, yep, put my money to work, and 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 they can kind of do that as well. Um, but it's it is important no matter what. I mean, as an investor, of course, you need to know your numbers. Um, you need to know how you're going to pay people back. And I think the fact that you pr had the proper, you know, training that, you know, you, you went into it knowing, although, you know, I, I understand you were nervous and you weren't, uh, it was your first time doing it with OPM, but we all have our first time doing with OPM. And I think being transparent is very important. Um, you know, being truthful with people, um, but making sure of course that yes, you know how, and that, that you're going to be, um, paying them back as well. Yep. I think being confident in what you're doing as well, like just having confidence in yourself to like, that was probably the hardest thing for me. Like I have never been so nervous in my life as, as I was to pitch something to somebody. But once you've done it once, you feel like I could do this again. Okay, let's talk about the pitch a little bit. We don't talk too much, uh, too often. We haven't been on the show too much about the pitch, but it is an important piece. And, and, and like, do you feel like it's a sales pitch or is it just a more of, of a matter of fact or maybe it's changed maybe at first you felt like it's this big you know sales yes. you know you're selling something and now it, it, it's kind of changed but i'd like to see how did you see it when you first started and how are you doing it now oh gosh i feel like we were trying to sell our soul at first <laughs> like, <laughs> okay we don't want that no. <laughs> i feel like we were like but this and this and this and this and this i feel like it was so much at first but now it's like okay now we can just talk about this is the facts, this is what we can do, this is what we're going to do, and th this is it. And so like, we just show them the numbers and get right to the point. We don't have to be like, we just show them our track record. If you if you w believe in us and you want to invest with us, um, we want to show you our track record. And if, if that doesn't speak for itself, we understand that your concerns are X, Y, Z. How can we, how can we help you overcome those concerns, right? And if it's not gonna be with our pitch, our whatever we've showed you, then maybe we're not right for each other, right? Maybe we just, maybe we're not right to work with each other, right? But then you get people who are like, yeah, yeah, I'm all in. And then, and then that's exciting too. So, I mean, you just have to, it really depends on the person, I guess, on right. who you're pitching to, yeah. I guess. Yeah. You're pitching for lack of a better word. Okay. So would you yeah. come back home afterwards and say like, uh, hey, Susan, like you should have said this or hey, Daniel, like, why did you say this? Or we talk too much or we yeah. talk too little. Like, did you with this? Because I know Dave and I, we definitely had those conversations, especially at the beginning, um, because we it was new to us, right? It was outside our comfort level. Um, what the, the behind the scenes, those conversations. Look like. <laughs> yeah, like we had a few of those conversations where either I won't speak enough or Susan had talked too much or vice versa. And then yeah. it's like, maybe next time if we're doing this again, just try and let them speak or have a breathe for a minute. Like, oh, sometimes Dan just has to like grab my hand and just be like, calm down. Like, you know, like let me get a word in or let the it's other okay person to, speak for a minute. It's okay to pause. <laughs> <laughs> it's and, good though because it's a good way. Yeah. Well, and I love that. Like, you're you're just improving, and and uh, that's uh, these are conversations you should have. And if you're not doing it with a partner self-reflect afterwards okay what did i do really well so don't uh you know it's easy to say you shouldn't have done this or what about this or don't you know talk too much talk too little sort of but what did what went really well maybe your you know it might have been as simple as your handshake or your hello or your you had your cash flow matrix that you're able to show them the exit you know whatever so identify what went well and then of course that continuous never-ending improvement that we always want to to get to as well so um and now are you always pitching together then is that how you both do it yeah for the most yep. part it is the pair of us pitching together yeah there have been the odd occasions where one's pitched on their own kind of thing and the other's pitched on their own 
but then like we always have a conversation together afterwards with the people that we're pitching to as well so it, I, it just depends yeah. on when you meet people and where you meet people and things like I'm that. I'm a huge networker, so I can't stop talking to people. I think I hand out my business card to like 30 people a week. Dan's like, wow, like you need to chill. But I just, I am always trying to network to people because we're also trying to grow our business with what we have as well. Like we have, um, so we want to keep growing our business. So the only way to do it is to talk to people. Well, so. I, Dave and I, we used to do that when we were getting started. We'd hand out our business cards to everyone. We would make an effort of, if you're going to the grocery store, make an effort to, to speak with people, um, let people know. And, and it does. If, if you do that consistently over time, if you're talking to an extra two people a day that you wouldn't have made an effort to before, well, that's 60 people a month that you, and you know, times that times a year. Like That's a lot of additional people who know who you are that didn't know you before. So that little bit of consistency o over time as well um i love that okay so let's talk about this um eight plex that, that you purchased now it sounds like it was the opm that you that you used um yes. was that with secured funds with that um and yeah let's break down that that deal a little bit here um so it was um it was just funds that this person just had um in a savings account um that were just making them very little interest rates which was like nothing at the time because um, the rates were really low at the time we were able to negotiate a pretty low rate anyways um so um yeah we pay them back so over the five years principal and interest payments at like five percent interest rate because at the time interest rates were at like 1.2 no they were like, like 0. 0.7 they were really bad <laughs> yeah so okay. he's quite happy with the interest rate he's quite happy to wait the five years just to get all of his money back yeah. because he's getting the principal and interest payments over the five years which we can pay him back sooner because we can almost we're just about like i think we have like three more apartment units or four more that needs renovating so we're almost yeah. done the renovation process on the aplex um yeah. what was the purchase price uh 725 so about 90 grand per unit okay 90 and we days. turned three of them into short-term rentals that are fully rented out for okay, the next you went short term rental. Wow, <laughs> interesting. <you>. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then we have, um, we had increased rents on three of the units. Yep. And we we evicted one, so that was really good because then we can now we're able to increase the rent on that one, which was great because and we renovated it too, so that kind of it looks really nice now <laughs> compared was to. Was it a, a little bit <laughs> underperforming? It was really, well, this was really underperforming because the people who were, who owned it, they were retired and done. Okay. Um, and they just did not want to do this anymore. Yeah. The building was suffering from a lot of neglect and yes. just not wanting to put money back into it. And people were really struggling because they didn't have our vision of what we could do with it. And like a lot of people are not doing short-term rentals right now from where we are. And so we had already gotten into the into the business of short-term rentals and in, and rentals. So we thought, let's just give us a go. And we ended up blowing it out of the water. It was amazing. So now this is a really big cash producing asset now. So except for all the renovations we've been putting into it, but it's all coming back. Like it's just so yeah, it's, working, it's well. working well. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So you put 725 into yes. it. Well, yeah. 90 K or so per door. Um, yes. renovations it's it kind of seems like it's an ongoing um how you said the the private money was it uh, for the down payment was that a promissory note that you used then um yeah we used the promissory, promissory note. note yeah yeah okay so and for those who who are like no what's a promissory note again that's a contractual agreement where x you know this person will lend you x amount of money for x amount of months or years for x amount of, of percentage okay so you got a promissory note for the documents so i don't remember yeah. all of the um paperwork exactly i just remember him signing and like yep we're good with this i was like awesome we will sign here thank you okay okay <laughs> awesome awesome okay and then what about renovations are you using your own funds did you raise capital for that as well so the building is actually paying for a lot of its own renovations so we live in a community we are so lucky that we know so many people in the community as well and that dan is quite handy as well so That's um helpful. so we're doing a lot of the renovations ourselves actually and so, and we know a lot of people in the community who are 
allowing us to work with, them. work with them. So we don't have to have this cash flow right up front for them. Like they're allowing us to make payments on things because they know us well and trust us. That's um, because you're handing out your business card to everyone. <laughs> so this is, this is no accident here. Don't, don't pretend you just got lucky here. Um, it sounds like you've been building this network <laughs> over a period of time. So talking with people and having those connections. It just feels like all of this is just happening it's just so positive and wonderful and it's just i guess i never really thought of like what did we do to get to those steps um i never really thought about that i guess we had been making these connections for a while so there you yeah go. Boom. love it i can't awesome. stop smiling okay. now thinking about it well and and you know what and this is what happens when we get into it like oh i'm so lucky and this just happened well i don't necessarily believe in luck i, I do believe we, we create um you know, our future and things that has happened, you know, over, over a period of time and those kind of connections right now, people know, like, trust you, you have the connection with them. They're willing, they're choosing to be, I'm sure they're not like, I'm sure if I were to call them up and say, Hey, want to do, I'm sure they'd be like, Mel, who are you? And why would I want to do this with you? So, so you right. build these relationships. So, okay. So building relationships, super, super important. Um, and then you were able to get creative as well. Right. So, all right. Not being afraid to ask a lot of people will not ask for, for payment plans or, Hey, can I pay you more at the end? And those kind of things to make the numbers work. And I love that your deal is cash flowing enough to pay for a lot of the renovations because that's often the case. You're, it's not like you, you didn't buy the, the, I'm assuming you didn't buy the property and it was fully vacant. There's tenants in them. And as there's changeovers, that's when you can start doing some of these renovations. So it's not like it's a lump sum. Um, and in between where you're accumulating your monthly cash flow to help pay for, okay, once, this tenant leaves and we're going to, you know, lift the, the value of the, 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 of the property so we can increase rent afterwards. Cause it's of course a newer apartment. Is that kind of what your plan was? Yeah, yeah. it really was. At first we weren't sure if it was going to work. We were kind of nervous cause, but we had this plan and we're like, no, we're doing this. We're going forward. We got to take this risk because if we don't take this, what if we miss this opportunity? And then, you know, and it's okay. Like if we, if we failed, it would have been okay, but we just, nothing was going to stop us. <laughs> like, right. We were like, we're going to do this. And then we just kept doing it. And then we just shocked ourselves. We're like, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know how this keeps happening. <laughs> well, you know what? We had a session. I'm not sure if you were there uh, inside the Action Family or if you saw the replay. The, the, we had a mindset with uh, Simon, another, another one of our Action Family uh, community members. And, um, and we we're talking about mindset together and how that, how huge mindset is as part of building, uh, your portfolio and, and being, uh, confident and, and those kind of things as well. So, um, I love that, um, that you naturally found that as well as part of, as part of this process. So, okay. So now what's the plan with this building? Is it, are you going after a nice appreciation? Is it the monthly cash flow? Uh, for, for those who are like, okay, tell me the, the numbers here. What kind of profit or, and, and only share what you want to share, of course. Um, yeah. But what was, what was that like? Woohoo, I, I, I won on this oh, one. Oh gosh. Within the first month, we renovated and we got our one unit completely um, short term rentaled out. And it was rented out for an entire year. And that pretty much, that unit cash flowed the entire building. Wow. <laughs> one so. of them just yeah. for like the mortgage and we also turned our mortgage into a cmhc i don't know if that's something that um was so that helped us out a lot too okay. so yeah. that was really great yeah to um, reduce the, the so did you go with a long yeah. longer term yes we did yeah. because yeah. we're going to refinance at some point anyway but it ended up working out so well for us because again our goal is to cash flow so yeah. that we can make sure we can do all of our renovations in a timely effective manner <laughs> and cost efficient and then turn that baby around and go yeah. into another property with it okay let's talk <laughs> about that for a second because i'm sure some listeners here are going wait, wait a second here you guys are making a mistake because you're going to pay a whole lot more interest because if you went i don't know if you went with 30 year amortization let's say as opposed to a, a 20 year up or plan um, like what, is it a 30 year that you did? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you did a 30 year, uh, plan. So, okay. So some people are thinking, but that means you're going to be paying a whole lot of interest, right? We were, right. most of us were brought up that way, but you're thinking, no, 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 no. I'm okay with that. I'm keeping my monthly payment really yes. low. I'm keeping yep. my cash flow high. I'm able to flip yes. this unit faster. I'm going to refinance it, get that lift sooner 
then I'm going to have this chunk of money and I'm going to keep doing it over and over again. You yeah. pretty much exactly got what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's the power sometimes of going and, and yes, will you pay, technically speaking, will you pay more interest going with the 30 years? Yes. As opposed to, let's say 20 years, of course. However, it's what you're doing with that money and will bigger picture for your portfolio, will you be able to grow faster and do more things? Um, that's where uh, the comp, you know, I, I rather do 30 year and then have 10 uh, buildings as opposed to going 20 year and have the, the one. Yep. Exactly. And with rates right now, CMHC was really, really great because it also reduced our interest rate too, because our interest rate would have been like, I don't know if. I think it was an extra 2% it was like an extra, if we didn't have CMHC. Yeah, it was extra 2% if we didn't take CMHC, but okay. so we were like. We're taking okay. CMHC. <laughs> right. Okay. So one unit basically is paying for your mortgage. It sounds like the yeah. majority of the hydro expenses. Is that correct? Yes. Wow. Okay. So yes. you found yourself a you found yourself a, a pretty <laughs> sweet deal there. Yeah. We wanted this building so bad, Mel. We have been stocking this building for for months, and it was off the market. Somebody was going to buy it, and they just they couldn't see the potential in it, and so we stocked it, and we kept stocking it, and. Like I said, Dave just told us to keep driving around and Dan and me drove around again. And we're like, there's still a for sale sign on this. Why is there still a for sale sign on this? We thought it got sold and we were gutted. And then all of a sudden um, we call our real estate agent. She's like, no, the offer fell through. They didn't, they didn't have the financing. And we were like, oh my God, put our name in the hat right now. We're like Perfect. trying to figure out cre creative financing for this thing. We're like, we're getting this building and that's it. We're getting this building and it's happening. I love <laughs> that. <laughs> and that happens sometimes where, you know, you think one deal is done and it's sometimes it is. And sometimes maybe the owner doesn't work out with him. And he'll sell it sell in two years or maybe the deal with somebody else fell through, which was the it sounds like that's what happened here as well. So, OK, so you're doing combination short term rental um, and, and then um, a typical uh, long term apartment rental as well. Um, what's uh, what's next for, for the two of you? Um, we're actually looking at the the is it? The one that you guys had a video about, I think it was like last week, it was in Dominican, Dominican Republic. Republic. Oh, okay, we're looking at yeah. that right now. That, we have actually a meeting with them um, right away here. We're thinking about that as our next option because that one really. Yeah, it looks like an interesting prospect. Yeah, oh. but in addition to that, we're also looking at other places in the area as well. But um, that one sparked us. Yeah, well, what's funny about this one for those who didn't attend uh, my session, um, it's actually two of our Action Family community members as well, Alva and Kathy. I'll put the link here at the end of the video um, that you can you can check out uh, her video when I interviewed her about I think it was about a year ago. I interviewed the this uh, the two sisters. Um, so they're two sisters from New Jersey. They bought properties using promissory notes and then they did a development in the uh, <coughs> Dominican Republic, 100 doors. Dave and I, we purchased two uh, units from them and I know other Action Family members as well. So so that's exciting, even at least, you know, again, I'm not saying this has to be the right deal for you. You'll do your own due diligence, of course, but even the fact that being open to going outside of your area and the possibilities of doing those kind of um, things as well. This program has opened our minds to something that we've never thought of before. Um, this is stuff I would have never thought of. I would have never just been like, let's go get a property outside of Alberta. I would have been like, no, let's not do that. That sounds wild. But now I'm like, like even Dan was like, let's look at that deal. Let's make a meeting. And I was like, oh, Dan, <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's make a meeting. <laughs> I love it. Dan, you've, uh, you've, I'm sure uh, you've, you've changed a lot, right? Since we first met. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. But I would you say do, he's right? changed the most because I'm the one that's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And he's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, let's look at the numbers. And now he's like, okay, let's talk about it. Look at the numbers. Let's figure it out. Let's figure out how we're going to do it. And I'm like, let's figure out how we're going to do it. Those are different words than we've ever used before. <laughs> well, how, okay. So, how powerful is that? Your language that you use, right? Um, you know, for the eight plaques that you wanted, it's not, okay, well, let's pick up the phone and try again. Let's, let's convince our, out of everyone, again, people say, oh, you had fa easy because it's family. Family often is the, the hardest people to convince it, to lend you money. And if you can convince your family, just like you're doing now, now you have other people that want to, to invest with you as well, right? So you, you're doing all the, you're taking all the proper steps, um, as well and, and figure out how, right? So 
do it once and then you improve and you keep growing, you keep growing. Um, so, so that's amazing. And I love Hillbred as well. Of course, there's lots of opportunities there um, as well. Do you think you're going to go um, cross board in the States as well? I think so. Yeah, probably at some point. We have friends that live in the States. I think that would be a good idea to explore that. <laughs> yeah. The right deal yeah. comes up, we'll look into it. And Yeah, it has yeah. to be the right deal for us, though. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely an option, though. <laughs> That's great. Um, let's head right into the, the real deals questions here. Um, okay. okay, so what's your biggest real estate investing mistake? I have them all written down here. Oh, there you go. You're organized. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> There's been a few. So obviously, um, just mistakes, things that we could have done better is not evicting tenants that were living in that building before we purchased the property. Okay. Um, that was a huge mistake for us and it ended up becoming yeah, a when, bigger headache when we we're doing the walkthroughs on a few units like you can tell the ones who don't care about the unit and will not like look after it we should have been a bit more forthcoming and said we would like them to be evicted before we take possession of the building then we're not dealing with a headache yeah afterwards kind of thing we we had one guy mel i'm not gonna lie to you he was trying to sublet his apartment while we were trying to purchase it and we're looking at him and we're like what i found it on facebook ads and i was like no no called the real estate agent i was like you can let him out of his lease because obviously he wants to be out of his lease right because i'm not going to have some random person who I didn't get to have a conversation with just really knowing who your tenants are um really getting to know the people in the building yeah. even though you don't get to meet them all it's not every time like depending on how many units you're buying like we were buying eight but if you're buying 12 24 or more than that you don't always get to meet everybody and not every landlord gets to interact with every tenant because some tenants just don't complain or have any issues right, right. so but at this particular one, we kind of saw that one coming, but we didn't. Yeah. Uh, it was just one of those things we felt guilty. I don't know. We have to take that out of our equation. It's a business. It's a business. Yes. A but business. sometimes emotions and, and it's almost, yeah, yeah. It, it is, uh, it is difficult because yeah, I mean, you, you want to treat them well, absolutely. And all that, but yeah, you have to make sure that, uh, <laughs> Um, you have those right kind of conditions. Use my conditions yeah. list that I give you, right? To, to make sure to follow that as well. Did we yeah. ever learn about conditions from that video that we watched from your guys' program? We had to, we really realized um, we missed a whole bunch of conditions. And we had, we had a homeless person that was sleeping in our apartment. Okay. <laughs> And that was really stressful. Um, and they didn't let us know that that had happened. And so okay. when we had taken possession, that had happened. I'm not sure if yeah. we're allowed to talk about that. So. No, and I mean, no, that's completely <laughs> fine. I mean, and these things happen, right? That, that, that's the reality um, that, okay, you know, how exactly, how do you deal with these kind of situations where you go, oh, I didn't, I've never dealt with this before. What do I yep. do now? I want to, of course, you know, of course, we always want to be supportive and all those kind of things. You also want to keep other people in, you know, your current tenants happy. Is there being complaints? Like, there's a lot of different ways that you can look at, at the scenario as well. But it's 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 a matter of, of knowing how to deal with those situations when you go, you know, I'm a firm believer. You don't know what you don't know and until these yep. things happen, right? So having the right kind of conditions, knowing how to deal with situations. And, and if you don't know, this is where, you know, I'm a big believer on, uh, on our community for a reason, right? Chances are, you know, Dave and I, we've probably been through it just from having thousands of units <laughs> or t thousands of tens throughout the years. Uh, and just being able to, to network with the people who's probably been like, okay, yes, this happened to me. This is how I dealt with it. This is proper procedure and legal procedure um, yes. and all those things as well. We did have to follow the rules and we did follow the rules and we were super lucky that we had people like again who helped us guide us to the proper rules because in those situations i'm like i never dealt with this before but again that's where the mm -hmm. action family came in and there were so many people on that in that program that were able to be like okay this is what you need to do this is what you legally can do don't exactly. do this yes <laughs> well that's huge i mean when it comes to yeah when it comes to tenancy and those kind of things right you have to follow and you know that we're huge on that. You have to follow regulations. Don't yes. go, you know, they're going to have a whole different type of, of issues if, if you don't follow proper procedures and regulations. 100%. But you were, but bigger problem, you were able to, to deal uh, with the, with the situation. 
Yes, yep. we were really proud of ourselves because we never thought that we had the guts to just like we had to get out of the emotional part of it and just focus on this is a business. What do we need to do to solve this issue now the appropriate way? And then once we got there, we were able to then it just snowballed into better and better things, right? Because we were able to then evict and then we were able to now renovate that unit. And now it's like beautiful. Right. <laughs> and, okay. and now we can rent it for more money. So it worked out really well for us. <laughs> oh, there you go. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So I'm dealing with those difficult uh, situations. Um, question number two, what's, what's one tip you'd like to share with our listeners? <sighs> Make sure you put proper conditions in your documentation for your real estate documentation really make sure that is the most important thing because do otherwise your due you, do your due diligence because you will get stuck with tons of garbage and all sorts of stuff that now you are responsible for whereas they could have dealt with that for you because they were the ones who should be responsible, should be responsible for that yeah, yeah. and that only was one if you put it in right only if you and that's the thing they're the one that should be but only if you as an investor did your own due diligence and put those right kind of, you know, you're doing your due diligence and you're putting the right kind of conditions on because I agree, you can end up in, in a mess you don't want to be in. Yep. Oh my gosh, yes. And you don't want that. And we learned from experience that we should have put better conditions in. So please check your conditions, watch that video. It's so important. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and interview all your tenants and really, and if you have a bad feeling about something then really do your due diligence and make sure that you are investigating everything because you just never know if your if your gut yeah. is telling you something. Yeah, protect yourselves. Protect with yourselves. It. Yeah. Right. Love it. Um, if someone wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do so? So we actually have Instagram, Facebook, and email, um, and a website. So. <laughs> we have a website. Hey, too. Oh, good. Fantastic. <laughs> so we actually have our email is twilightpropertiesinc at gmail.com. And then we've got our website and then Facebook and Instagram is the same. So there yeah. we go. Fantastic. So uh, I encourage you to, to go uh, follow them and follow their, their awesome journey. So thank you so much um, for, for being on my show. It's uh, it's great. I know we've been trying to connect and it's so great that, uh, that you, you're both here today. Thank you thank so you much for having us. us. Yeah, we were super excited and nervous. Oh. And, and, and you know what? And I love it. And you push through that fear, right? That's how we get results in life. You push through, yeah. through the fear. So, um, no, you guys are a very sweet couple. Thank you so much. I love that uh, you got that eight bucks that you wanted for a while. You pushed through it. You raised the funds. And now you're looking at going internationally as well and doing all these great, exciting things. So I'm going to keep following your your, your success inside the, the program. And uh, thank you so much again for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. What a great chat with Susan and Daniel. I love that they used OPM to buy this amazing cash flowing property. And now they know how to do it over and over again. If you have any questions about the strategies that we shared, make sure to ask us questions below. If you have any questions about some of these strategies that we discussed today, we read and reply to all comments. And don't forget to give them a thumbs up for this great interview. And if you want to check out another video just like this one regarding the Dominican Republic deal, make sure to check out this one right here. I'm Investor Mel and I'll see you there.